Hello, I'm Joyce. I'm June. And I'm Paula. We're the Kavanagh Sisters and we'd like to welcome you to our series of Count Me In podcasts where we continue to shine a light on childhood sexual abuse and its impacts. In today's podcast, we will be discussing forgiveness and its importance in your recovery from sexual abuse. The hardest <coughs> thing about forgiveness is the word and the pictures it conjures up. Because every time I ever thought about forgiveness, I had this vision that I had to be friends and hug and kiss somebody that I didn't feel good about. So that really would have stood in my way for a long, long time. And even if we do a post on forgiveness, you can tell immediately that there's huge resistance to it and huge misunderstanding around our intention of forgiveness. And you're right, it is that word is, it is the block. The word, yeah. And I do completely understand it because at a stage in our recovery, it, the word forgiveness just jarred with me because, yeah, what it meant to me was exactly what it seems to mean to others now. It's like letting him off the hook yeah. and I wasn't ready. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't conceive of forgiving him because I misunderstood what it meant. I thought it was all about him. The forgiveness has not to do with the other person. And even though somebody would have told me there was benefits in it for me, I didn't care because yeah. I wasn't ready to let him off the hook. I thought he has to suffer. That's the block. Yeah. That is the block. But yeah. it's because you, you just think that some things are not forgivable it's unforgivable what yeah. you did and that completely confuses you because you're not forgiven the act or the behavior or, or even the person yeah it's not like uh, oh god love him did i feel sorry it's not about that it's actually about somebody having control over your mind that's basically what it is and once your mind is full of crap that he did to you he has the power of it. He's still inside you. And hatred for him. Yeah. The hatred for him is consuming you. He has no idea what you're thinking and feeling. And so he is still controlling your life. Yeah. And he's still scot-free because he is unaware yeah. of how much she's impacted me. But like you can forgive somebody and still dislike them. Still absolutely have nothing to do with them and not want them in your life. You know, I used to think that once you had a problem with somebody, you just couldn't get over it. And in terms of forgiveness, like the journey we've been on at one point, we just wouldn't have wanted to forgive. Yeah. We couldn't. And we weren't able, we weren't ready, willing or able. But when you do finally reach that point, you realise, my God, I could never have moved forward until I managed to overcome that obstacle. Until I managed, because it's about setting yourself free and getting rid of all of that hatred that is only harming you and will eventually lead to some kind of health issues yeah. because the body will only allow you to carry that kind of negativity for so long before it starts to manifest physically and when we try to promote that depending on where the person is that's receiving the message will determine how they receive that message yeah but i think if we make it quite clear that uh, to forgive somebody does not mean they won't be held accountable for their actions it doesn't mean that you don't want that to happen it doesn't mean that they are now going to be part of your life and everything's lovey-dovey. It just means it's almost like puking. You're getting them out of you. Like their shit is their shit. Let them carry it. Because we've been carrying it for all our lives. Mm. So it's that kind of thing. That, that's the thing you need to understand. But it is that thing about you have to replace the word forgiveness because it has too many connotations for you. And replacing it with letting go can be much simpler for you to accept and, and acknowledge understand. and be willing and it and also understand that it's a process forgiveness is kind of like the last thing you do when you're on your healing journey now i'm not saying that's necessarily the way it should be done but it kind of happens that way because until you you become aware of yourself and everything that's going on and how your abuse has impacted you and your own thoughts and your own feelings about yourself you won't be in a position to forgive anybody no, but you have huge, huge resistance against it. I would have had. Oh, yeah. I would have thought that's somewhere I'm not going with. But at the same time, I'd be now in a position to have empathy. Like, what the hell happened in his life that made him like that? Now, no. Still, I'd say, that's his problem. Yeah. I'm not carrying it. Around. I can see why people would struggle with that, especially 
he must have had an awful life, so there must be a reason. Yeah. I didn't go out and abuse a child just because I was abused. Yeah. So that's not a good enough excuse. I thought forgiveness was forgetting. Forget the past, let's move forward. And Whatever was done. Him. Yeah. And I that I really struggled with because I just thought, no, no, there's no way he's getting off that light. Yeah. No yeah. way. And the reality is, Paula, I think he got off very light. I would also say, that's his problem. Forgiving it for some people, they also tie to religion. It brings you into the church and what you were told as a child. And that in itself has lots of problems for people because that's where you were oppressed and abused by the church and what they, they kind of trained you to be in this world. So that also is a barrier to people thinking forgiveness is something they need to do. I remember when we started watching uh, spiritual leaders on telly on the likes of Oprah and all that. All these people who were talking about forgiveness, they look like gurus and sitting there like monks and they're praying and meditating. That also felt unattainable. So in order to get to forgiveness, you had to be this spiritual being, which is not the reality either. But it's all of the different things that come up when you think of forgiving. Yeah. And I think like... For me, uh, quite early on, I made a decision that I wanted to forgive only because the pain of the hatred and the anger I was carrying with me was overwhelming. I had an intention, you are right about it being a process, because I had an intention to forgive long before I was actually able to. Like I did intend to, I did want to, but I found it very difficult. And when I start feeling like I was making headway, when I felt a bit better and a bit happier in myself, and I thought, okay, just let that go, I'm okay. And then I would hear a story or see something that would bring all those emotions up in me and I'd want to kill him in an instant. And I would feel disappointed that I hadn't achieved the forgiveness that I thought I had reached. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, have I done anything? Here we go again. And there could be months or years before I would get that feeling again that I felt like I'd, I'd let it go. I even wrote to him when he was in prison, thinking this will uh, absolve me, you know. I wrote to him saying, you know, you're, you're nothing, you know, and you don't, you're not impacting my life anymore. It was all words, didn't mean, <laughs> didn't mean anything, because I, still ha I was still holding onto loads. It's like all of the healing process. As part of it, it takes as long as it takes, and it happens in layers because this has uh, you've taken this on in layers you know? it, it's really i think it's really important to understand even why you would even look at forgiveness because i tell you i think it can become another thing to bash yourself with because you haven't got to that stage where you can forgive your abuser so therefore you're not really a good person yet and you keep waiting for those that goodness that you think you're incapable of having i just think it can become another tool for you to, to find something wrong with you. Well, yeah. I didn't want to be a good person. I wanted to be out of pain. And when did you actually realise it was hurting you? Right away, all the time. I felt like, from as long as I can remember, I thought I needed help. That I, you know, I had all this anger in me, this hatred. I thought I was a black soul. I thought I was a horrible Yeah, but did, when did you actually relate that to your life? And I, forgiveness. I think I, I started thinking about forgiveness when I st after I had purged uh, lots of stuff, you know, in therapy and all that. And it felt like unfinished business. It felt like, it felt like it was just something there that I had to do, that I had to achieve. Because I knew I wasn't done. I wasn't rid of it. And it was the most obvious uh, direction to be heading. But as I said, just, when the, just because you intend to doesn't mean you can do it straight away. Well, yeah, I remember the time now, and I would have felt, uh, especially at the Philip Schofield interview, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but I was actually in a really good space, and I thought that I had reached my point, and I did forgive. And then he mentioned something like, what would you do if somebody clicked their fingers? I could not believe my reaction. I'd snap your fucking fingers off. I don't know where that came from. And I just went into absolute shock because then it was saying, oh, Joyce, you failed. Like, you didn't do it. You didn't, you don't really forgive. And if you did, how, how could you come out with that? Like, so it is constant beating yourself up because I think when we started counselling, the language I heard throughout the process was you learn this and then you integrate. I didn't tell you what that actually no. meant. 
Even yeah. if they didn't have a guidebook as to how to do it, they didn't really explain what that was. Yeah. And what it meant. I know when I started and finished, I felt no different. And I wanted to feel different. I had an expectation I would feel different. And it was only through the writing of Click Click where the integration happened. It was like the pennies are dropping. That it's, it's one thing saying things and even knowing them on a level, but when they drop, it's almost like they go into the pit of your stomach and you say, oh yeah, yeah, now I get it. So I had many of them moments with the forgiveness thing because like you, I would have felt the weight of this. It's like wearing an overcoat in vain. The weight of it that I'm carrying around, all the things I wanted to happen to him, uh, what I, how I wanted him punished, and, and a lot of the time it was, I just want him to realise what he did and to apologise. Yeah. But it's it's a weight and it's a constant weight you're carrying around. It's the hurt and the anger and the biggest thing, and you don't even realise it, is the self-hate. I, I never connected forgiveness with pain. See, I was totally unaware of how much pain I was in. Yeah. That was the problem. I thought I was slowly dealing with stuff. All of my stuff was directed at me. Yeah. Just think of it from a very, very young age, we were told we were this, that and the other. But not only did we carry it, it was constantly built up and added to. Everything we were told, we believed wholeheartedly. And then we went on top of that again and said, Jesus, we're even worse than that. Like we're the devil's spawn. And that's why I, like I, I've seen some posts where they're, where they're talking about why children don't tell. and. The conclusion was that they're they they're afraid they won't be believed. Now, and of course, that's in it. That's part of the mix. Well, there's there's a whole package. But I feel that this is more uh, like that self hatred is much more of a deterrent against telling than the fear of not being believed. Yeah. Because it's the ownership of the self hatred. That's deep shame that we carry. And the belief I think everybody who's ever been abused has, it has to be my fault. Why would this be happening to me? You're convinced that you are the one responsible no matter what is happening to you. Nobody would do this to you if there wasn't something wrong with you in the first place. Before yeah, because you haven't life. got the rationale, you haven't got the words yet, the dialogue, the comprehension, the emotional intelligence. To sort that all out, to discuss it to yourself even, you just arrive at it. The only conclusion you have open to you as a child is it's all about me. Yeah. Everything is about you as a child. So all this pain is about you. You're consumed by your feelings, your pain. You know? But it is, it is about them. But you see, because our growth was stunted on so many levels, that was really prolonged. That period of our life where it's all about us was really prolonged. Your only point of reference as a child as to what you are and who you are in this world is the people around you and our adults. Yeah. So if your point of reference on every angle, especially for us, was always negative. Everybody in your whole world is telling you there's something wrong with you and you're stupid and you're thick and you're ugly. So how would you ever fight that? Everybody in the house was in pain and in their own unique brand of pain. And as a child, you try and get that out of you onto somebody else. And unfortunately, that was all our siblings. And just like the way cultural norms tell males and females they have to behave differently and feel differently and think differently. Exactly the same thing happens, especially in an abusive home, because the adults or the ones who are supposed to be the primary caregivers, they're the ones who are giving you your thoughts and your beliefs. And, and we had the man in our home telling us that other than our home, nothing and nobody else was safe. That you couldn't trust anybody. How, as a child, did I get through that? I do remember that now very strongly that the only place safe was in yeah. the home. We believed that safe looked like that in our world. Being trapped, being abused, being told how to think, talk, walk, everything. To us, that was safe. It was only in our home that we felt safe, ironically. Yeah. I didn't shift my ideas on what I had a right to expect in life. They didn't get challenged until we did work. Because I didn't even know I had them. In terms of forgiveness, you can't move forward unless you find a way of, of letting go. Put whatever word you need to put on it to make it okay for you. But until you reach a point where you can look back 
and know that it's no longer got the power over you it once had. You can't move forward with it, you're forever stuck there. And there's so many people now suffering. It's an absolute tragedy. Nobody should get stuck there because the information is out there now. You know, you have to be in that space to even be aware. What does an individual get by forgiving? Their abuser? You get whatever. freedom from the past. Uh, not more, no more pain, no more anger. You don't care about why he did what he did. Like, whereas most of your life is around, why would he do that to me? We know he needs to say he's sorry. Why am I not lovable? What's wrong with me? And I hate what he did to me. I want to kill him. All of those thoughts and feelings, you're free from them. You never have to worry about that again because it's all on him and you're separating yourself and claiming who you actually were because it's still there. It's just been buried. You've got to now go in and recover that person. You can't get completely free until you find a way of letting go of that. Your head is clearer. Yeah. It's not filled with self-hatred, and so you're not so predisposed to take on other people's stuff. And you now own your own thoughts and your own feelings. It, for me, it was about getting to a point in my life where I was able to say, hang on for a second, I really have to not blame everything I'm doing in my life on what happened in my past. Now I have to take responsibility for, I can either continue this road, or I can look at why I'm doing it and change it. We would be so unforgiven of ourselves yeah. that we expect to go from A to Z now. Yeah. Yeah. We made up our mind we want to get there now. We're not interested in the process, the process <laughs> and the path and the road and yeah. all that crap. We want there now because we made up our mind. Yeah. So we would have been very like that. Yeah. And that can be hard for a victim to hear too that we cause more harm to ourselves than the abuser. Yeah. But it's important. Yeah, because if, I feel the, the feeling that goes along with that is the injustice of it all. Yeah. Why? That's not fair. Yeah. I didn't break it. Why do I have to fix it? You know? yeah. <laughs> well, like when you're a child, absolutely. That's. But when you come into any level of awareness where you now know that what's happening to you, you're not happy about it and you want to do something about it, well, now you're moving into a state of personal responsibility. And you have to take responsibility or you're never going to get yeah, out of it. But see, the word responsibility is nearly as bad as the word, the word forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah, it's another one. It's the weight of it. Yeah. Like, it's dreadful. Yeah. So you can understand the resistance. What's the benefits of taking personal responsibility? What's the benefits of forgiving or letting go of, of what happened to you in your lifetime? Well, I'd say for me, on a physical level, I can honestly tell you I felt like I just threw up. And you know when you feel sick and you throw up, you immediately feel better. But I felt all the fluid nearly was gone out of my body that I felt that light. It was like cleaning the windows. I could see instantly. Because for me, what I felt was that blackness that I yeah. felt was in my body. And only through our writing and process have I realised that that was an accumulation of every hurt I ever felt. Any time I'd been abused, any time I felt somebody passed a derogatory comment about me or insulted me in any way and, and I'd take that on personally and add it to my shame bundle yeah. that I had going on, this blackness that I was convinced was me and that I was the darkest, blackest soul that couldn't be fixed. After going through all the counselling and everything, I felt right, yeah, that's grand, but no one has even touched on the actual real problem. So over time, through writing and learning and dissecting our past, did I, did all of that start to gradually fall away? I didn't realise it until one day I took a deep breath, trying to locate its presence where I always knew it was, and all of a sudden it was gone. How did that happen? I didn't see that coming. What one thing happened that made that, it wasn't one thing. It unfolded and, and released itself piece by piece. But what I got out of that was the ability to know now, this is me here. I'm not bad, quite the opposite. I'm perfect, I'm a good person. I can say no end of positive things about myself before and mean them. I couldn't do that before. There's a confusion, especially when you're dealing with your past. Because there was a part of me that always felt I was a really good person and nobody could see it. But there was a bigger part of me thought, if nobody can see it because it's not there, you're in a war with yourself and the only way out of it is personal responsibility and awareness. I don't think you realise like, yeah. that forgiveness is about you. You yeah. need to forgive yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would have said to you, fuck off, like, what, about, what did I ever do? 
I wouldn't have even realised I needed to forgive myself, but like your pit, yeah. when I looked at all the things I blamed myself for or held myself responsible for, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. So, like, forgiving yourself is a lot and again, harder than forgiving yeah, it is. And You're again, abusing. that forgiveness and that personal responsibility, again, all sound hard, like effort when you're all in pain. But the whole idea of it is to enter into empathy and softness and gentle with yourself. Whereas we were hard, you know, go big or go home people. We were all or nothing. And to soften all of our edges for ourselves, not even for others, to forgive ourselves and like when you say forgive yourself, you feel like, oh my God, now what have I done? Like I'm, I'm, you know, and we did all enter the Rape Christ Centre with the belief that we were going to be there three, four weeks tops, and, and we were going to be fixed. Yeah. Out, yeah, they're going to fix us, whatever yeah. was wrong with us. See, I was in there a long time before I realised uh, I, I had to be the fixer. I didn't. I that shocked me. Well, yeah. I never got that. I, even when I left, I still didn't think it was my problem or my fault. No, because we spent our whole life. Looking externally for the answers. Yeah. Our culture never encouraged us to look inward. Like that would be a very good thing for you to realise how much of your time and your thoughts are spent thinking about who did you wrong? Who did you wrong? What do you want to happen to them? It doesn't matter what your thoughts are, but to be aware, like even to have a jar there and every time you have a thought about that person, put it in the jar. And at the end of the day, to realise how much of your time is spent on that. Imagine being able to take all that out of the jar and spend that time on yourself. Because you're worth it. <laughs> but it's also important to recognise that if you're not ready yet to even yes. consider forgiveness, just honour that, recognise that that's okay. Yeah. It's, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you if you're not ready. No. It comes all the way down to you. It's for you, it's about you, and it's only you who get the benefits from it. It would be very interesting if you did nothing else, only write the word forgiveness on a page and then write down, what do you think that is? What does that mean to you? And if you were to forgive somebody, what would that look like? Thank you for listening. Hopefully some of the information we've shared will resonate with you and bring you to a place where you can have compassion for yourself. Please know that no matter how you feel, or how you respond to the abuse, it was normal. We're hopeful and optimistic that those in a position of power to bring about change will be moved into action so we can finally eradicate childhood sexual abuse. So please spread the word and share the information. The decision to heal from childhood sexual abuse places you on the most important journey of your life. You're in charge of this journey. Only you know what works for you and what doesn't. It takes as long as it takes because there's no rush in it and there's no fake in it. You have to feel it. And just as the ripple of pain that you're in goes out and impacts all of those around you, so does the healing. And the more you heal, the more everyone around you benefits from your healing. You've been listening to the Kavna Sisters podcast. You can contact us through Facebook, Twitter and Instagram or email the Kavna Sisters at gmail.com. We would like to leave you with a quote that you can carry with you throughout your day. Change the way you feel about the word forgiveness because it is only a word. Change it to letting go. The need for forgiveness will come to you when the time is right. And whatever you choose to call it, just know that it is a gift and it holds the key to your freedom. So welcome it with open arms.